the forks are drawn on the BMW and I just wrote the code that we are ready to make the spaces to short them. I'm quickly gonna grab these two because maybe we'll have time to adjust those as well. So while I'm driving to my friend's workshop, let's use the time for some context. The BMWs had for their time relatively long front suspension travel, which made for great riding comfort, but at the same time it makes the bike sit oddly high in the front, so we're gonna drop it. And there are multiple ways how you can actually lower your classic motorcycle forks. You could either machine the actual fork tube, or you can go the easier and cheaper route, that's what we're gonna do, and make or buy a pair of spacers. And from what I've seen, that works for most conventional motorcycle forks, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. But first, we need to get the forks off the bike. We start by taking the handlebars off the bike. Next, it's onto the brake helipers, and I notice again that on an old bike like this, the blowtorch is your best friend. And if you're looking for a good one, I can definitely recommend you this one, which is the Power Blowtorch from Rothenberger with MAPP gas. The tip doesn't get hot, it works upside down without spitting flames. I'm very happy that I have this one because I had to use it on almost every single screw to get the forks out. Anyways, back to the brakes. Now that the nut is off, you can take a M8 bolt and screw it into the rod that holds the caliper in place and pull it out towards the bottom. With that out, you can then take the caliper off. The next step is to unscrew the top nut while the forks are still on the bike. On the airheads, this nut is relatively flat, which is why a regular wrench or socket is prone to slip off because they have these chamfered edges. For that reason, BMW provides a special tool in the original toolkit, but you don't need that. If you have it, great, but if you don't have it, you can take a regular 36 mm socket and just grind these chamfered edges off until it's really flat. That way, you'll get a good grip and the nuts should come off. Next, you can take the fork stabilizer and the front fender off before unscrewing the axle nut and taking the front wheel out. With an 8mm hex socket, and in my case, fire, you can unscrew the two bolts in the triple clamp. <sighs> and now we get to the part that I struggled with the most. The fork tube sat so tight in the bike that I had to use the blowtorch to heat up around the triple clamps so I could pull them out bit by bit. That's actually not the right way to do it. I found a little trick in Brooks Airhead Garages videos. If you have a BMW, you probably know that channel very well. And if you don't, you definitely have to check it out or buy a BMW. All you have to do to make your life a hundred times easier is to take a large blade screwdriver and gently tap it into the slot on the triple clamp. Once you have the fork out of the triple clamp, you can take the spring out, mark the top side and drain all the oil by pumping the forks a few times. Next, you want to carefully clamp one of the fork sliders into a vise and here it's best to use some plastic vise grips like these or a towel to protect the fork. Now we start with the fun part because now it's time to take the fork apart. We start by loosening the small nut on the bottom first and after that the big one. And it's best to use the adjusted socket for this one again because it's also very flat. The ones on this bike needed some persuasion like all the other nuts and bolts but at some point they came loose quite forcefully. With a normal socket, I might have damaged this one, but nothing happened. Now we take off the small nut and the washer that sits underneath before we actually take off the big one. Inside the big nut, there is a rubber damper, which often gets very hard and yeah, breaks. For the next step, put something underneath the fork that can absorb the rest of the oil that's still in it, because we're now gonna pull the piston and the fork tube out of the fork slider. On top of the piston, there's another small washer that you don't want to lose. On this bike, it was so stuck that I didn't have to worry about that. But just keep that in mind because you now want to gently shake the fork tube with one hand underneath it until you can grab the piston and pull it out. And with the piston out, you now have the forks as far disassembled as we need them to be. So let's see what Nicole is doing.
sorry to interrupt, but by the way, Moin is a word that you definitely have to learn. That's how we say hi up here in Northern Germany. And that, that is Nickel. If you have watched some of my other videos, you might already know him because he's helped me countless times. With the forks already disassembled, we made a quick plan and took some measurements because I'm gonna use his lathe to make the spaces. But if you don't have access to a lathe, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you in a second what you could use instead and how you have to measure to get the right dimensions for your spaces. But first, let's make the spaces for the BMW so I can better show you. And it's also the first part that I've ever machined, so it's quite exciting. That's the space is done and we even had time to adjust the aluminum tubes that I'm going to use to make some fork sleeves for the BMW, but that's for a future video. Now let's take a look at how the fork parts actually work together so we get a better understanding of how the spaces work. All right, so those are all of the main parts of the front fork. There are small parts in here, but we don't have to disassemble that for this job. So what's important to understand is where the piston sits because that's the part that connects the fork tube and the fork slider. Right here at the bottom, there are like big washers, basically. The fork piston slides in from the top all the way through here. The piston then slides right in here and is connected firmly at the bottom with this nut. So this whole assembly doesn't move. This all stays together. On top of the piston on this side sits the spring and the bottom of the fork tube sits right here. So these walls that I talked about sit on this side of the piston, which means these parts can't move apart like that. But with this assembly, the fork tube and the fork slider can actually move in opposite directions. And when the fork gets compressed, what happens is that for one, the spring gets compressed to the top nut on the fork tube, but also the oil that is in the fork has to flow through all of these little holes right here. And that makes the fork respond differently to hard impacts compared to soft ones. And then on the top side, the spring is held inside the fork tube with this nut. So this is the main assembly of the fork. So now let's see where the spacer goes. What we do is we place this spacer right here. Before the piston would sit right here and sit against the ring. Now it sits higher up because we have the spacer in between and the spacer is actually the contact point to these rings. The fork tube can't go all the way back out because it's blocked by the spacer and that makes that your fork sit as much lower as your spacer is high. How you get your measurements for your spacer is you take the piston and the inner diameter is determined by the bottom rod. So make sure to get a good measurement of that. To be on the safe side, I would measure in different locations. As you can see, this one at the bottom is 15.18, but at the top it's 15.37. So the inner diameter of your spacer has to be a little bigger than that, so it can actually glide along this rod. And what you also want to keep in mind that you never want to block all of these oil holes at once. The best would be if you never block those because it actually is a vital part of your forks. Some fork types have a spring that sits on here on the piston. If you have that, put your spacer in between this part and the spring. That way you always have the spring over the holes and the oil can flow freely. On the BMW, I don't have that spring, but since the spacer isn't too big, we don't cover too many holes at once. And it only really matters when the suspension goes very far in. So I'm not too concerned about that, but just keep that in mind. For the outer diameter, you want to be a little smaller than this ring right here. And on the BMW, that is 25 millimeters. So we went with 15.6 on the inside and then 24.8 on the outside. Also, since I don't have a spring, the amount that the forks will sit lower is exactly the amount of the spacer, so 30 millimeters. Obviously, it's great to have very precisely machined spacers with the right dimensions, but if you don't have access to a lathe and you still want to drop your forks, you can actually look for some stainless steel tubing that has very similar dimensions to what you need. Just make sure that the walls aren't too thin and that the spacers don't rub anywhere. Now let's put everything temporarily back together and put it on the bike. 
I've actually got a complete rebuild kit that I'm going to use when I do the final assembly of the bike but for now I just need one of those and also I'm going to use some progressive fork springs on the final assembly which have a much tighter spring at the top and then a wider spring at the bottom. To put everything back together we start by sliding the spacer over the piston and then the piston goes into the fork tube. Here you can use the fork springs to push the piston a little further in because with the spacer now it's not too easy to actually get it aligned with the hole on the other side. You just have to wiggle it around a little bit until it actually pops through the hole. So with that you can pull this out and push the whole thing into the fork slider. Now it's time for the new skateboard roll that sits inside this nut, which you can then push in and screw that into the fork slider. Next up, we have to secure the piston to the nut. So we put on the washer first and then put this little nut on. I'm gonna tighten everything just by hand because I'm gonna rebuild it anyways. But if you're gonna do this properly, then please check your manual at this point because you need to know the torque specifications. And you would also have to add some oil at this point. Keep in mind that you should probably reduce the amount of oil that you're putting in. What I think I'm gonna do is calculate the volume of the spacer that I put in and reduce that amount of oil. If you know a better method for how I can determine the right amount of oil that I have to put in, please let me know down below in the comments. But we move on and put the spring in. Make sure that you put the right sides up. This one is marked at the top, but most often they're also a little bit narrower at the top. Not by much, so if you're in doubt, just measure the top and the bottom and you should know which one goes up. With the spring installed, we have now everything back together and we can put it back on the bike. Depending on how big your space is and how much the spring now sticks out, you might have to cut your spring to actually get the nut back onto the fork tube. But I think with this, it should be fine once it's back in the bike. So I'm gonna try first and then go from there. This actually works quite nicely. I'm holding the nut down with my thumb and then twisting it with the palm of my hand. And that is how you can lower your front forks the relatively easy way. It might be hard to tell on camera, but it definitely makes a big difference to the overall line of the bike. I might have been a little bit conservative with the spacer height. Next time I would probably go for 40 millimeters or so. I hope this video helps you to lower your own forks. Good luck with that. And if you want to watch another video, check out this one right here. As always, thank you very much for watching and I see you in the next one.